Krakow has just been voted Europe's best short haul break. It's the top spot for food, cultural sites and value for money according to a witch travel survey. And to find out how much of a bargain it really is, I've been set the challenge of spending the day here on a strict budget of just 20 quid. It works out as around 100 Polish zloty, and to see how far that'll stretch, I'm being taken on a tour of the city by an expert guide. For 15 years I've been coming to Krakow. I think this is a city that is essentially built on cobblestones, courtyards, churches and cake. Krakow has topped our European city survey better for food than Paris, than Rome, than Bologna. It was rated five stars for food in our survey. British travellers are price sensitive at the moment, you know, the pound isn't doing so well, it will still stretch a long way in Krakow. And what I would say is, it is a bargain break, it's not a budget break. So you're not coming here to have a lesser experience than you would in some of its rivals, what you'll get is luxury. With so much to see and do, our challenge starts in the heart of the city. This is the main square and this really is the, the main attraction in Krakow. And this is your Instagrammable spot. This is where I've seen everyone taking their photos. Oh, if you've got to, yeah. If you must, uh, if you must Instagram, this is the place to come. Uh, get the backdrop of St Mary's that you can hear in the background there. So what's happening here? So this is, if you can see at the very top, um, there's a trumpet player just peeking out of the window there. So every hour in Krakow, um, it's called the Hey Now, um, this trumpet player pokes his trumpet out and plays a little bit of a tune um, and it's to commemorate uh, the city guard from hundreds and hundreds of years ago. The city was being invaded by the Mongols. Uh, firemen ran up there, started to play a warning and got an arrow in the throat. So the story goes, and that's why it suddenly stops. And uh, this happens on the hour, every hour throughout the day? On the hour, every hour through the day. Catching the famous trumpet call in action doesn't cost a thing, but prepare to work up an appetite dodging the crowds. Time to break into the budget with a traditional treat. So these are uh, bagels. What most people don't realise is bagels came from Poland originally, the Jewish community here, 500 years ago. Get your hands on oh, one of those. Oh, look at that. Okay. So it's not exactly a, a bagel, but this is, this is what they originally were. It's a little bit tough. A little bit tough, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. It's alright, it's not what I call a bagel, but it's, it's nice. With all apologies to crack off, it's pretty rubbish, that bagel. I've never liked them. I just wanted you to try it, to see it. That's the original bagel, but I think, let, let's get you over to the, the Jewish district and try a real bagel, a real tasty bagel. Nice yeah? one. Thanks for that, Rory. <laughs> a short walk away, and next on the itinerary, a classic crack off snack. I taste them. Oh, that smells so good. Oh, it does smell nice. Oh. It's good. It's good? It's better, than, better than that one earlier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Refueled, we're ready to explore the Jewish district's rich history. This, for 500 years, was the kind of heart of Jewish life in Krakow. A lot of the tourism here, and you'll probably see golf carts going around behind me, is unfortunately centred on the kind of tragic end of that, um, that history. So there's trips to Auschwitz, which is not very far away, and the former Jewish ghetto is just across the river. That's what Schindler's List is, is based on. Extremely moving. It's worth spending some time, not rushing those. What I would say is that while it's you know important to see Auschwitz and, and see the ghetto, spend some time seeing um, the life of, of Jews here now as well. Taste the food, see the music, um, and you can easily spend a couple of days in Kashmir. There's really a lot going on. Oh, time for you. food. The world of Polish food. My recommendation would be the pierogi. So pierogi is like dumplings. You can see them in front of you here. Here's all the different types. The two kind of classics are pierogi z miesem, which is minced meat inside the pierogi, um, or pierogi ruskie, which is uh, cottage cheese and potato. That's, that's the one I'm going for. This all looks and smells incredible, but is it going to fit the budget? It's the most expensive thing in here, if you get the pierogi with the meat, 14 zloty, so 4, 8, 12, you're looking at just over 3 quid for your whole lunch. Not bad. Yeah. So these have now been 
dumped in hot water. Dropped in hot water, yeah, yeah. For, for kind of two, three minutes, like, um, like ravioli with Italian food. Bon appetit. What's the Polish version? Uh, smash an egg on. Yeah, bon appetit. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. good. Three pounds as well. Bargain. Fresh from sampling one of Poland's most famous dishes, it's time to visit an iconic local landmark. This is incredible. Something else, isn't it? If you, uh, if you like castles, you'll like this, because it's kind of a castle inside a castle inside a castle that keeps just unravelling as you go inside. <laughs> this is the heart of Poland. If you were to boil it down to one building, it is this. This is where the, the kings and queens were crowned. Um, this is where they ruled from for many years when, when Poland was ruled by kings and queens. Um, and it is just a phenomenal building. So if you're looking for one reason why Krakow got five stars for culture, I think just walking around here. And we've not parted with a single Zloty? Not a Zloty, no, no. <laughs> Still keeping it, keeping it cheap, because we haven't finished the day yet. Um, I mean, here, you can pay, so there are things you can pay and see, permanent exhibitions, um, certain parts of the castle to get inside you have to pay for as well. Um, if you're really into Renaissance art, that's probably a good idea. These buildings are absolutely stuffed with fantastic art and some wonderful architecture as well. But I have to say, this courtyard, this is it, you know. This is free, you can get up here for nothing, and this really is the best thing you will see. With its breathtaking views, it's easy to spend hours wandering around the castle grounds. But after a busy day of exploring, I'm told there's only one way to watch the sunset. So we've come back to the square. It's absolutely stunning here. But this doesn't fit in with the budget, Rory. Doesn't fit in with the budget, but you know, you've had me traipsing around castles and courtyards. I'm knackered and we finally got to the best part of the day. Uh, I would not normally recommend uh, going to the square to eat or drink. Certainly never eat here, it's, it's all tourist traps. Right. But to enjoy it, it's such a beautiful square, surrounded by cafes and restaurants. Uh, it is worth spending a little bit more to have a beer. Uh, so this costs us about kind of four pounds, four pounds fifty. Uh, if you went three, four steps off the square, like literally down the street that's in front of us, uh, you, you would only be paying three pounds for a beer. So this is a bit of a premium for where we are, but the views are absolutely gorgeous. So worth it for one or two beers. And we have picked a Polish beer. We have picked a Polish beer, yeah. I'm gonna get you to try and say it. There it is. Oh, Okochim. That's not bad, that's not bad. A Okochim, yeah, oh, it's not pretty good. Off. A kind okay. of Pilsner, a little bit stronger. Cheers. Cheers. As the day draws to a close, it's time to tally up how much of the budget is left. Okay, so that's come to 19 slotty. Very expensive. In expensive. Polish standards, yeah. I mean, it's what London are, prices, isn't it? London prices, yeah, yeah. Which what leaves us with a total of 47.90. You have been spending like Rockefeller on a binge. Uh, no, that's all right, that's okay. So I'm gonna take you to a very nice restaurant with very good Polish food, um, and that is gonna cover your meal, it'll be fine. Let's hope so. While Poland might not be the first place that comes to mind for foodies, for the last stop of the day, an upmarket menu awaits. Now, while it doesn't necessarily look most appetising, or at least mine doesn't, yours looks nice, it smells incredible. Is this how it's traditionally served? No. I have to say, I'm quite I'm impressed. It was a brave choice for a foreigner to Poland for the first time, go for the guam piece, you know. I've ordered the best pork chop in the world and you went for a dish called pigeon. So that's that's impressive, first of all. <laughs> this is a dish with, it's wrapped in, in uh, cabbage leaf. Uh, you've got buckwheat inside and mushroom, so that's kind of traditional, although sometimes it comes with, with meat. But here they've paired it with um, truffle oil around the outside. I've seen a lot of guam in my time. That is one of the best looking ones I've seen. Um, but I'm, <laughs> I'm still happy with the pork chop. Yeah, I, I, I think you made the right decision. It's <laughs> nice though. Fine dining rarely comes cheap, so how will the budget fare after our slap-up meal? So that comes to a total of 42 for my meal. Great. That's good news. Which means I I'm think. left with 10.10. 10.10. 10. 10, 10. So you started with 20 quid, which was 100 zwati, and you're left with 10.10, 10, which is basically £2.50. I've 
spent the entire day. You, yeah, it's pretty good. And the, the great news is my administration fee for the tour guiding is exactly 1010. I didn't share that with you earlier. So you've exactly hit the 100 zloty mark. Congratulations. Thank you very much indeed. It's Welcome. been brilliant. Thank you so much for showing us around Poland and showing my us around Krakow. Absolute pleasure. It's clear to see why Krakow's been rated Europe's most popular city break, with which travel readers giving it a whopping satisfaction score of 93%. For more expert destination advice, visit witch.co.uk slash travel.